Hail and well met! Welcome to Ten Paces! Howdy, howdy. It's another Monday. It's another 8 p.m. Central Time. I know there are many out there, but I'm glad you chose this one. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, a real fun one, actually. We have something special in store tonight. A little... A little je ne sais quoi, as it were. I've been away. I've been in France, if you couldn't tell by my fancy accent and funny words. But I'm back. You're so erudite now. I know. I'm a learned man. Cultured now, you're going to be like me coming back from New Orleans being like, I saw the world! It's so much better down there! <laughs> yep. Yeah, we truly live in the cesspit of the world. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> Florida is is trying their hardest. Oh, I hear they're trying to expand. They're, they petition, oh, no. Yeah, they petitioned to uh, absorb the surrounding states. I, at Civil this point, I can't tell if that's a, a joke or not. <laughs> I'll have like, I I would believe it. <laughs> Civil War II liturgical boogaloo. <laughs> yep. All right. How how are you guys? How how have you been? It's been a bit for me. Oh yeah. We'll we'll catch you up to speed. Uh, we went out to sea. Uh huh. Uh, we staved off scurvy. Nice. I did get. Other nautical diseases. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got the gout. You got the water gout. What's your name? <laughs> yeah, from filling my joints with all that sea water. It's normal gout. It's just you're in a pool at the time. Yeah. And they told you. Nah, this ain't the gout. This is the sea gout. And this is my sea herpes. <laughs> I told you not to uh, use that kelp as a condom. That's amazing. <laughs> but it's all natural! It's true. You're living that primal life. <laughs> it always worked when I was. Sex and manatees. That's where the other ones came from, huh? I like to experiment. Anyway, I gotta... Oh, oh no. What's this? Oh no. The sand doing to my voice. I'm returning to my roots. <laughs> what the have? I've just got regular herpes now. Shit. All things returned from once they came. Some good old down home herpes. Oh, classico, if you will. <laughs> call it a. a dead Don't man call special. it a comeback! <laughs> <laughs> We've been here for years. <laughs> Welcome to 10 Days, everybody! I hope this is what you you tuned in for. Can I clip that? Thank you. Oh, I don't think "thank you" is the right words here, but all right. Hey, I enjoyed it. And it, it hey, it was good for me. That's <laughs> you know better than bad for both of us. Aaron's a selfish lover. It was good for him. That's all that matters. Yep. I almost made a reference to a pre-show joke that I'm not gonna continue. <laughs> oh, there's plenty of time for that. Yep. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll circle back to that. Everything will return to it. <laughs> it always does. I think it's about time we get to our first prompt. Now... I do have to ask, is this the one that I gave you guys a suggestion for, or is that our, was that scheduled to be our second? I believe that's the second. Okay, that's what I thought. 
Okay. So for this one, we're going to have a sort of dual prompt where I want Travis to make a sidekick while Dakota makes a henchman. Okay, guys, do you think 30 for that or do you want something wacky? Call it a uh, seat, Dakota. You got a, a pressing schedule at all? I mean, yes, but I mean, it depends if we want to. Yeah, right. So we'll call it right here. We'll we'll part the tent flaps a little bit. Uh, you want to do a thirty thirty hour? Yeah, that's for like uh, okay. I almost did three hundred. Oh, uh, what was the other <laughs> option? I didn't know there was going to be two. Well, I mean, there's a slightly concise version that we've used in the past. The 40-40-40? Or like a... You know, shaving off five minutes here and there. Yeah, we can do either way. We'll see how it goes. If it comes to you guys real fast, then we'll be like, yeah, we're done. And go to the next one. Well, if there's one like thing so I know many... it's coming fast. I am so many selfish. rainbow dashes. Let's, let's get going. I don't want to think <laughs> about rainbow dash right now. Um, um, so yeah, with this one, uh, Dakota and I are assigning each other something to, oh, a little yes. springboard to jump off of. That doesn't look so bad. Well. That's on you guys. I, I don't know what you got. You didn't go yeah. tell me what. I... I'm making Travis go first because I'm unprepared and I don't want to come up with something <laughs> heinous. <laughs> well, you, okay. Well, you can't, um, you can't copy him. I'll say go easy or go hard. Is this for mine? Or you, I, for yours. You give me whatever. Oh, I don't care. Okay, go hard then. I'm giving you the option, Dakota. I'm giving you the choice and whatever you sign yourself up for, yeah, I'll he's... be sure to follow through on. He's saying you can't bitch if it sucks. Um, for you. It's gonna be awesome for Travis and myself. Shit. I'm just gonna go with my gut. Give me easy. Okay. Um so for your henchman, your concept is a forklift. <laughs> Interesting. That was the easy choice. We'll never know what the hard one was. I mean, until... It was me. I was the hard one. Just, just you? Well, I it, hope not. It was, We're all in this together. It was Travis as a forklift. Ah. <laughs> uh, one day. <laughs> one day, maybe. You gotta meet the right hag. I gotta get my certification. Ooh, yeah. To be a forklift. You do need to be a certified forklift. Well, Dakota, have you uh, scratched the old brain wrinkles? Uh, I think this is for your sidekick, right? Correct. Yes. Fuck. I feel bad about the first thing that popped into my head, so let me give you the same. Uh, then sock it to me. But the first thing that popped into my head was pharmaceuticals. I'll take it. Yeah. All right. I got 30 on the clock. You guys ready? Sure am. Gonna... Three, two, one, draw. Another little reference here. What what do pharmaceuticals look like? Uh, good good call. Farmers. Ah yeah, it's like a tailor for a farmer. Yeah. I'm picking up exactly what you're throwing down. I appreciate your joke. This is clever. Thank you. Yeah. That's the sign of a good joke. It is. You, well, sometimes you gotta you gotta tell everyone else that it was a good joke. 
Oh, yeah. And then... Because one of us... Whether or not it lands is on them. Yeah. Put the onus on the audience. It's it's the most polite way that you can uh, repeat a joke without repeating the joke and someone thinking that it... Or mis potentially mistakenly thinking that it was your joke. Ah. I would hate to usurp that comedy throne. So we have full amnesty. <laughs> yes. Well, I hope. And if not, we can just say it's parallel thought. Yeah. Call that the Schumer. Now, is that because of the, uh, the, the what is it, Amy Schumer? Or yeah. is that, like, something to do with shoes? I don't nah, know. Nah, no. it was uh, a take on how just that Amy Schumer, Schumer got accused of stealing jokes. Oh, like um, Dane Cook. Yeah. Or, I mean, I'm sure in I'll... hindsight, look at that man. You, you think that man could make a joke? <laughs> <laughs> that man looks like he couldn't sit still on a three-hour flight. <laughs> What does that mean? I don't even know. Uh, that's all like a judgment where it's like, yeah, I don't like, okay. Uh, that I mean, that I, thing? He looks like the kind of guy to chew on a $2 steak. You know what I'm saying? I've done like that before. Coke. Looks like the kind of guy that might, uh, might, uh, dry clean his socks. Okay, there you go. Now you found something that I actually find damning. Did you just pull up like a, a 1920s slang dictionary? <laughs> no. Because all those sound like that kind of that kind of jargon. Ah, you know that man. That man's more crooked than a than the bumper of my Bentley. <laughs> Than the children's bike stuck in my Bentley. <laughs> oh god. The bent bars of the broken bike in my Bentley. <laughs> Benny ah, barely... they call me Turtle from Entourage. Oh no, I haven't seen that show, but now I know. If I ever watch it, I know something happens. Uh, I haven't seen it either. I only know it because it's a... A reference brought up by a, a podcast I listen to. <laughs> stolen joke. Uh oh. Stolen joke, stolen valor. Can you cue the the stolen valor eagle that we should have queued? Uh, if I could remember how, maybe. Oh, wow, they've added a bunch. Oh no, that's just random places. Oh my god, Discord. Never mind, it's too late. It's so bad. The eagle has uh, flown the coop. I don't think eagles live in coops. Most birds don't, that's, as it turns out. That's weird. That's a weird they thing. They live in the sky. Yeah. In the clouds. Everyone knows that. Oh, like Dropbox. Yeah, like Dropbox or, uh, I don't know, Microsoft Office. 365, baby. Yeah, love it. Use it or lose it. Yep, pretty much. Um, That's been a huge frustration at my work, is that... Microsoft wants to move everything to 2365 because every tech company wants to move to a, a subscription basis. Yep. However, uh, what I've been doing at work is getting what are essentially third-party retailers who bought up a bunch of... A uh, bunch of keys. License keys, yeah. Yep. For older versions of Office. Hell and... Yeah. 
my boss is happy with it. I'm happy with it. It's frustrating, but because I have to contact Microsoft support with every install. That's weird. Yeah, and it's just, you know, some phone farmer who's I just have to talk to for 10 minutes and then they'll be like, okay, yeah, uh, here you go. Yeah, you're legit. Because I found out what a bunch of those companies are doing is buying up the license keys for, like, companies that go defunct. That's a clever idea. Yeah, except it just it's more hassle for the the next buyer. True. Because of how licensing works. Cuz you don't own the product. Right. You bought the right to use it. And that's why I don't like buying digital games. But I still do. Yeah. There's been a push for, and I mean, it's what's driving the collector's market is just having physical media. Yeah. Uh, but like it, beyond just the collection aspect, it gives you access to that that media at any given time. So if it gets taken down from every social streaming service, you can still watch it because a lot of those companies still retain the rights even after they take it down from their own thing so it just sits in their vault for no reason which is what has me tremendously worried about like the now old old news uh warner brothers animation just purge yeah that's true i mean it, it, it i don't think they would just destroy everything they were just because that oh, would they're be... not gonna they're not gonna destroy it but it's just gonna sit unused forever yeah because it's not immediately profitable everything's gotta be it's all about that uh this might be valuable later i mean that's what happened to so many of their animated shows that's what why there was like a huge canceling throughout cartoon network shows yeah. Um, one of my favorites, Craig of the Creek, had to had to cancel. But they were able to wrap up at least. What was it? Craig of the Creek. I've never heard of that. It was a pretty good show, honestly. I'd only seen a few episodes, yeah. but I respect uh, it. It's what I drew on the episode with Davey. Um, that I spider punked out. Oh, okay, yeah. It was just like a a fun, you know, kids just being kids and like the oh, imagination yeah, yeah, of kids yeah. kind of yeah. It's it was really fun, wholesome, and just had like a really diverse and unique cast. Uh, and I think it was an absolute delight of a show. And also, because it was made by animators, it had a bunch of dork influence. Yeah. I really like the shows that, uh... I mean, that's one of the things I liked about Ed, Ed, Nettie, is that it would play off the kids' imaginations. Yeah. And then you also mentioned, uh, when I first brought it up, Clarence. Yes. Clarence was really Like, good. that... That resonated so hard with me. Just growing up, like... Lower middle class in, you know, kind of... White Surveyonia. Yeah, nondescript town. That's why I like, uh, Hey Arnold. Or, uh, The Weekenders. Yeah! Just those shows that are about being a kid. 
and like hanging out or whatever and like there are problems and stuff that they deal with hey arnold more so um just tackled a bunch of uh, heavier things than you would expect a children's show to oh yeah it was like about city living and you know kind of how to deal with a lot of the more complex issues you'd run into in that kind of life yeah and i don't know if he was supposed to be living up in like brooklyn or i think so. i imagine it was new york yeah that's definitely the vibe i would get from it but i've never been so i wouldn't truly know but always I'm... gave me chicago vibes okay i could see the same here i think that was like a lot of the architecture but it seemed more new york and like a lot of the the kind of places they go and also I just the east Isle of city they were living in I love the um, soundtrack. It's all jazz. Well, not all. Yeah, it, it's how I learned about Miles Davis. It's how I learned about Dino Spumoni. <laughs> Did this hit. Uh, Bang! Yeah. Pow! <laughs> you left my things on the floor. I don't remember enough to continue this. I'm sorry. Well, maybe I should bring something of yours. Well, you remember enough. And then something about plates and how he's just kind of a problematic <laughs> Frank Sinatra type. Yeah. Who sings a song about breaking all of his ex's shit. He also sings a song... Uh... You better not touch my gal or I'll pop you in the kisser, pal. Yeah. But that song about breaking shit is what inspired, uh... You to break shit of your exes when you were, like, nine. <laughs> Arnold's, uh... Flatmate Ernie? To get into destruction. No, that's not, oh. the, that's not the word for it. Demolition. Yeah. I do remember that. I remember him wearing a little hard hat. Yeah, like, it, it always surprises me how much of that show stuck with me. Yeah, that show was... But uh... it was impactful. Yeah. Like, Mr. Wynn, who lived in his building, uh, had to flee Vietnam and give up his daughter. Oh, yeah, yeah. That... Uh, Arnold's grandpa punched Hitler. <laughs> yeah. And huh. it, he punched Hitler, and I think he knocked out a whole Nazi camp or something. What it ended up being is that he gave them food poisoning. Yeah, that's what it was. He gave all. But he kept selling up the story, and he was he talked about how he socked Hitler right in the mouth. <laughs> It's a good show. It's so good. It's a shame. I mean, they made a good a good amount of them. It, I I just wouldn't. I'm gl I'm. I guess I'm glad that it ended before it got bad. Yeah. I mean, it certainly took different detours throughout its production. True. Like early episodes were just. Arnold, you know, kind of crushing and dealing with that, and then some episodes were about an actual ghost train. <laughs> the ghost train is in the first fucking season, too. Is it really? Yep, it's not even a late episode. It's like episode... See, I... It might be like episode three or something. Let me, let me make... I got that conflated because there's the episode where they do... I guess it's different episodes where they did like the alien invasion prank and it went haywire because it was another Halloween episode. Yeah. And I guess they played around the same time because Halloween. Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's episode eight. Oh, wow. So it's not even not even late in the show. And this is a song. They all sing when they get stuck on the subway. 
Wow, you are unlocking memories for me. Of time. Yeah, is these are long gone. These are core memories for me. <laughs> yep. Uh, speaking of times long gone, you got about 14 minutes left. Thank you. Of course. Her Jeff. Oh, Nevins. Oh, jeez, I've been slacking. We got two enlarged Kirby's. Let me get on that. He's a growing boy. Has been since the day I met him. He also says that uh, the co that Harold City is a combination of Seattle, Brooklyn, and Portland. I guess that makes sense. Uh, obviously, the show, like, always had some leftist cuck energy. That was my favorite part growing up. But yeah, I think that show radicalized me. <laughs> it probably did. That and uh, Rocco's Modern Life. Uh, that's what happened to Joe. Rocco's Modern Life? Oh, he loves that show. Oh, okay, yeah. You can't fight well, City I mean, that's Hall. Just you can't fight corporate media. America. Creatives are typically left-leaning, as it turns out. Weird. No. I mean, there are always some, some outliers. Oh, I've heard about a few outliers recently. Yeah, like... We're not gonna go into that story on air. Oh, I was gonna... But, uh... It's gonna mention never, a certain someone. Never assume. It was a certain someone. Oh, I can't mention it anymore. <clears throat> Joe. Oh, I thought you were talking about Matt Bosler. Oh, uh, no, I would never mention his sacred name. You I can't. never Don't... talk about that <laughs> hack. <laughs> Don't say He's his name three me. times or he might show up. <laughs> Say his name Bat three times, your pants will rip off and gold shorts will appear. Bat Mosler. <laughs> <laughs> gonna summon it's like his... the man bat equivalent of Matt Bosler. And I'm gonna summon his ass. At me, Osler Bay. At me, Osler Bay. <gasps> Don't do it. At me. Beetlejuice! Fuck. You said my one weakness, Beetlejuice. <laughs> I have to immediately say something else other than the last thing I said. It's in the claws. You, Dakota. Hmm? Yeah, that's fair. He's talking to it was uh, almost showtime. alternate Dakota. Sorry, sorry, sorry. In wacky dimension. <laughs> it's almost showtime. Dakota. Dakota, pin. Dakota, wake up. You say it one more time, I'm gonna go piss. Well, I hope wake you up. make it to the bathroom. Alright, well, I'll be back, guys. He's gonna go wake up. Back in a minute. Grab a snake, put up a little shake up. I miss him already. We, we, we had him for at least the beginning of an episode. Well, I guess That's all we can hope for anymore. He went to Jersey and thinks he's all Hollywood now. Yeah, he goes, well, that's my time. 30 minutes, that's all I got. He's been to Broadway now. Yeah, he's, he's too good for us. That's right. It's like, you know what I value more than you shitters? My shitter. <laughs> I don't value my shitter at all. That's why I got bidets, so I can let all my friends shit at my house. That's right. All my friends, they tell me, I save my shit for your toilet. <laughs> they Just think like the experience. Yeah, they think it's an, like, that's like it an honor towards me, but it's really just an inconvenience. No, see, I've curated my space, mm -hmm. so the more people that get to use it, I'm like, aren't I such a good host? Oh, do you put the, the Did tip... Did you enjoy your shit? Do you put the tip jar out? 
I actually hire someone to uh, stand there with cologne samples. Ooh, and to dry off your hands. Yeah, I don't want to inconvenience my guests. Yeah, do they do they also do the little pat down? Yeah, of course. Oh, wow. <laughs> we'll shave you if you want. That's some hospitality. Spare no expense. <laughs> I mean, it's ruining me financially because of how seldom I have people over. Mm, and it is by the hour. It is. But you never know. It's true. You gotta be prepared. I've worked in hospitality. <laughs> yep. I think we all have, in some way or the or another. Yep. You know, it does bother me in uh, Baldur's Gate that you cannot talk someone down after engaging in a fight. But there's a, I agree. There's a couple. That's another huge qualm I have with that. There's a couple. Uh, if you're thinking of it more as D and D. A um, couple aspects of it that are pretty lacking or pretty, uh, I guess, underpolished. But that's yeah. What... I mean, they can't account for every scenario, and I understand that. But I would love the ability to to try and talk somebody down, even if it's at disadvantage I... from like a combat encounter. Yeah, I think that's what mods are for. And I think people who play games like that, you know, long-winded RPGs, um, are more than willing to just read dialogue that isn't voiced. So you can yeah. add more. Or you could AI it, but it always sounds kind of weird. I think my main issue with the game is the interactivity. It, it feels clunky. Um, and I mean, I, I'm still playing Breath of the Wild, and so that just seems... Right. Everything seems very seamless, but it's trying to accomplish different, different goals. Yeah, very different. And I appreciate that there's so much I can do in Baldur's Gate, but Breath of the Wild lets me do that with a magnet hand. <laughs> yeah. Like, I had a, um, a quest where, uh, I found these guys that were protecting a crate, like, a shipment, and in the scuffle that I was trying to help them in, they ended up dying, and I just took their stuff, and I was like, okay, cool. And then I didn't think about that encounter for, like, 25 hours, and then I found some people that were looking for those two people, because they were with them, uh, and the shipment. And I was like, oh, those guys are dead. And they were like, well, shit, do you have the shipment? And I was like, yeah, here it is. But they wanted it unopened, and I had already opened it because I just rifled through their a dead person's stuff. And so they were mad at me and just tried to kill me. And I was like, dude, I didn't fucking know. And besides, your shipment's still good. Yeah, that's a very D&D thing that I think we've gotten away from as player base more than anything is like the... The immediate call to arms. Yeah. And so you always you always want that option to kind of diplomacy. I think the only exception to that would be if it's like a situation the character's actions have brought upon them in like a previous state. Right. Yeah. Like, there's certainly... Like, I just did it, or encountered a thing where I would have liked to have been able to talk the the parties down because I knew I was immediately in the wrong. But I, they didn't give me the option. Like it was just immediate combat, and they're like, "You're gonna die." And I, I mean, I guess I could have fled, but I don't know. I was on a quest, right? Yeah, it sucks that you can't, like, sheath your weapons and try to talk to someone. Yeah. 
And see, like, that's what... I think that's a big part of what... I guess I evokes me with that game is that... It's got a lot of cool ideas. Yeah. But it's not the... The parts of D&D I really play for. Yeah. But... There's certainly a lot of story there, and it's a beautiful game, and really well executed. I don't want to disparage that at all. It just... It makes me want to play the real thing even more. Yep. Um, Just because, like, I like those in-character, very human encounters, because anything can happen, and that's my favorite part. Like, I love seeing what... what clever players come up with. Yeah, just not the stupid ones. I don't want to hear their ideas. Yeah, they can butt out. Yeah, they can stick to Baldur's Gate. Idiots. Here, here. Start gatekeeping. Let the... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh, we're going to start a new hashtag. Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate keeping. Yeah, let me in. Nope. Boy boss. Uh... Fast lighting, Baldur's Gate. <laughs> Fast lighting is when we just want everyone to leave us alone so we can fish. It's just gaslighting, but Bossler's doing it. <laughs> Boss lighting. <laughs> like he did for the entire month of April? Pretty much. That was still one of my, one of the most respectable album releases I've ever seen. Are you all familiar with what happened with that? No, I mean, I'm not, but if I am not, then somebody in the chat may not be. And it feels weird, like, gushing about this guy that... I've talked to occasionally, but that let us down. I thought it was much. just like a really clever idea. Um, starting at on April first, he announced a full brand like, uh, what do you call it? Like a brand change? Yeah. Um, where it just seemed like a full genuine country persona. Uh, re- and rebrand. Yeah, I mean, like, the entire time I'm like, when's the other shoe going to drop? Because of who it is. Uh, But uh, at the same time, I'm like, well, this is what he wants to do. I don't want to discourage it. (laughs) Um, Way to go, pal. But, yeah, released a really good country album. That's that's weird. At the album release party... Talked a bunch of shit on country, and then talked about how people need to play need to play more real music, and then played an Ariana Grande song. <laughs> huh? That's a play. Yeah, but to go on with that for a month, just the commitment. I right. I respect that immensely. I do too. I don't know if I what could uh, time was? go through that. Uh, you got about 25 seconds left. Jesus. Yep. You better purple right. up that mixture. I am, but my boy is blue. He's a blue boy. You can you can go a little over. Get, get some of the basic colors nah, that you we want. We got so much more to, All right. to get to. In that case, that is time. Dakota, what you got for me? Uh, this is the certified, uh, the forklift certified lifters. Uh, they're just lifters. That's, that's their whole thing. (laughs) Can they, can they put things down? Yeah, uh, upon command. Uh... I like that design a lot. I do too. Thank you. Excellent. I really like that. 
They make me think of uh, Pikmin. <laughs> well, Not uh, something I expected, but I'm okay with it. Yeah, they're lifters. Oh, you know what? Yeah, okay. Well, Travis, tell me about your blue boy. Uh, this is... Pilsley. <laughs> He's the certified chemist and... Uh, supplier for our our team of heroes here. He creates a bunch of uh, concoctions and super drugs to kind of enhance his team. Cool. I'm thinking of both of these guys in terms of like RPG teammates and like what they could do. You guys don't have to, but that's what I was thinking of. So yeah, this one's basically like a kinda like, alchemist. Yeah, kind of like uh, Riku's mix ability in ten. Yeah, I had a really great experience with that one because I fought a boss fight that I was way under leveled for, and then uh, having to mix up quartet of nines on Didas. Oh whoa. What is that? And then use slice and dice to hit every enemy, and then every like every hit of slice and dice hit for nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine damage. Holy shit! So you just like obliterated the whole boss fight. Yeah, and then got into a bunch of areas I was way under leveled for. <laughs> Hopefully, you could go backwards. And you did. I should have, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I had a new game to get to. I was going to grind. Fair. Feels bad. Well, Dakota, um, we're going for uh, panels this time for essentially screen time. I was going to say that at one point, but I wasn't sure if that worked. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, you got there too, so it was a decent it's, idea at least. It worked enough for both of us to come to it independently. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna give you yeah, 12 panels for this little hinge dude. Oh my god! I see what you did there. You've been a little... The audience catch it too. You've been a, uh, a little busy beaver recently in that regard. Yeah! It's... it's so good. It's so good. Everyone should know it. We don't even have to say what it is. You should know by that little bit. Are you gonna keep it? I don't know what it is. Well... Get good. It's Venture Brothers. I wasn't listening, that's why I didn't know. Oh, okay. Are you gonna keep him blue? I think so. Uh, mistakes in I think the... it was like an experiment gone wrong. Oh, that's great. You know, I'll give you an extra... I was going to give you even points with Dakota, but I'll give you an extra one for that. Yeah! Man, Dakota, like, I don't think I say it enough. I love how, like, how you use the halftones. Thank you. Um, I have I had a friend show me a really cool trick. Um... Would you want to learn right now, live? Yeah! Share okay. it with the class! Uh, click on window. Uh, window. Go about halfway okay. down to layer property and make sure it's checkmarked. Uh, I've got... Okay, it's checkmarked. Alright. Now... Make a new layer. Can do. And then on the layer property window in the top right, there's going to be one if you hover over it that'll say tone. It's the one that looks, well, like half tone. We can't see this, but it's fine. I'm just letting um, you know. You said top right? I, it top, says I have it visible. Top right of the layer property panel? Um, Should look kind of like this. Oh. 
Um, I'll do more. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. Oh, and that. Oh, yeah. It turns your that entire built in. Yep, it turns everything into half tones. Why didn't get those stupid brushes then? Right? I didn't know, but uh, my good old uh, buddy from the school and my mentor uh, told me about that today. And your brushes aren't stupid. I, I really appreciate the halftone brushes that were created that I've been using for so long. Um, <laughs> which, because I know they're listening. <laughs> but, no, that's, that's incredible. Because I think the biggest part about this is that because you can change like the dot size as well can't you uh yeah and if you want to watch my screen you actively can change it oh neat oh as it's on the layer yeah what not only that the shapes holy shit clip studio you done it again I don't know if any Hell. of those claps came through my mic. Nope. No, it doesn't matter. Discord so ate him up. Okay. That's a, That's one for the soundboard is applause. I've been wondering how people were using um, half tones and screen tones with such like precision and like opacity. That's no, incredible. Yeah. I learned that uh, like three hours ago. And you've already applied it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Nick. Yes, thank you. Well, fellas, let's move on to our next prompt. Oh, uh, you move on. I will. I'm going to have you guys draw... Travis, you're going to draw a femme fatale. Whereas uh, Dakota will be drawing the number two of his organization. And uh, Travis, I want to give you the in the. I want it to be a uh, inspired by a lounge singer of some sort. Oh, okay. it can be a lounge singer, or have some sort of influences of one. But I mean, that's up to you. And then uh, Dakota, I would like you to utilize a Sentai influence, which for the un unin. Formed, uh, that would be like a Power Rangers or Super Sentai or I don't know. There's a billion. Common Rider is that one? Yeah. Yeah. There's just I, I did it. You did it. Good job. <laughs> That's it. I, I want the show. I did it. You did it. <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh, Moomin Rider, if you remember him. No. From uh, One Punch Man. The guy on the bike. Oh, that's what I thought it was, but I just didn't think you were talking about that show. Oh, yep. I mean, that's what he's based off of anyway. I got 30 minutes. You guys agree to that? Is that amenable? Yeah. I'll yell at you when I want it lower. Hell yeah. Let's go. Three, two, one, draw. I I saw a really great Moomin Rider cosplayer at ASIN when we all went. Um... They wheeled their bike around through the entire convention floor, which sounds like a fucking nightmare. That sounds so awful. I mean... Like, bulky cosplayers, I I have mixed feelings with y'all. It's, it's such a commendable thing, but you limit your access to a lot of the very public areas. Yeah. And we can start... Um, Oh yeah, I already it's ticking. Oh, okay. Um But with that, like you you have to be mindful of it and not like I was just at uh convergence in Minneapolis and a lot of these con parties are happening in hotel like hotel rooms. Right. And that's it. Right. So if you're bringing a very bulky cosplay down these very narrow hallways leading to the the party rooms like you plan better please yeah i'm just imagining like a mordekaiser walking down a hallway and he takes up the entire hallway and can't get into a room 
You can't get into a room and then also prevents Other what is a large and... flow of traffic. Yeah. It's like I certainly appreciate your artistry and everything. Yeah. But you've gotta you've gotta account for logistics. Maybe uh maybe be a, a sexy summer mordekaiser and have less armor. Exactly. You can just wear the helmet and have a wear mace. a bikini. Yeah. I think if you were somewhat buff, had the Mordekaiser helmet, a bikini, and like a floaty mace or something, that would totally like work as a what is what is the the summer line? But the summer line, a uh, pool party. Yeah, yeah. That that's perfect for uh, colossal. Which is the. The big swimsuit con. Oh, yeah. A bunch of Frankies. I didn't see any, honestly. Well, they're missing out. Maybe that'll be one to revive, but... Yeah. Prosthetics is hard. True. You gotta cut off, cut off a limb just for cosplay. <laughs> you can only do it so many times. Yeah, you you sort of limit yourself in a way, but you know, close the door, open a window. I like this. Cosplay is pain. Cosplay is life. <laughs> yep. Have you had any cool uh, moments in Baldur's Gate that you've... I know you haven't played a whole, whole lot. Um, I got party wiped. And then went in through just a different doorway through this camp. Uh-huh. And then with one intimidation check, uh, negated the entire encounter. Oh, whoa. I think... So again, like I, if that had been an option from the, from the get go, right? But it, it does, it does carry that feeling of D and D, where like, oh, these scouts are on edge, but hey, if you talk to the right person, you can, you know, kind of subvert the whole thing. Mm -hmm. They definitely want you to take your time and uh, really explore your options. They also expect you to play games, though. Yeah, they also expect you to do multiple playthroughs, which is weird considering how long the fucking game is. I absolutely cannot do that. <laughs> yeah. If I were to do that, I would get through the beginning part a couple times, and that's about it. Yeah, I, I'm a grown-ass man, and... Ain't got time for that shit. I got responsibilities. <laughs> it's already a 200-hour RPG. It doesn't need to become a 1,000-hour. As such, uh, shameless plug time, you might see that we're doing shorts now. Who? What are shorts? YouTube, baby! YouTube's like, answer to TikTok! What's TikTok? Who cares? What's TikTok, uh, precious? China's answers to uh, shorts. <laughs> What's China? Yeah, they... Oh, uh, that's the world's answer to uh, disillusioned America. Well, what is... the And the world is... Uh, um, you ever seen a this rock? This big, beautiful marble we live on. Oh. Ooh. I've seen... Um, yeah. I've seen marble shorts on YouTube. Like marble races. I, mean, I love the marble Olympics. Olympics. They're so fun. Have you seen those, Travis? Uh, I have. Are they the ones that are dubbed over as though it's a yep. horse race? Yep. 
And this guy just makes elaborate uh, marble race tracks and then races a bunch of marbles and dubs them over doing commentary. And it's it's just that, it's so fucking that great. spoke to me on a very formative level. Yeah. Uh, did you ever have marble works as a kid? No. What is marble work? Um, it's just like the, like the plastic track setups where it's like a bunch of tubes and different shapes and things that you can construct. Oh, that sounds fun. For, yeah. It, my brother and I used to do that all the time. Trying to build them as big and elaborate as we could. Kind of like a Rube Goldberg machine. Exactly, yeah. But it was all, you know, pre-constructed stuff. Uh, yeah. We did try to get clever with it and addendum them with our own tubes and whacking concoctions. Oh, for sure. Did you ever get any that worked really well? Uh, I'm sure we did. This yeah. was years and years. Early childhood, yeah. Sure. I always, uh, it makes me think of, did you ever play the board game Mousetrap? Yes. That's what it makes me think of. I always wanted to. I never, I think we actually played it as it was meant, maybe once or twice, but the rest of it was just setting up and resetting up the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the trap mechanic. Yeah. Of course. And that was the fun of Marble Works. Like, we got. Once we learned what a Rube Goldberg, Rube Goldberg Go machine was, uh, we, we got obsessed. And so we got obsessed with, like, uh, what's it called? A chain reaction? Uh, just that as a concept. I, I found so interesting as a kid. And so we just kept trying to set up stuff like that, and so we would make, like, traps for each other. Using a lot of, like, fishing line and doorway mechanics. That sounds incredibly wholesome, I won't lie. Oh yeah, we had our times. My older brother is very very mechanically minded and it's not something that really I grokked on to till much much later but uh, he had a bunch of friends who were very in a similar mindset and so they were always working on cool machinery and stuff like they built a, a trebuchet that just sat in our our yard for a long time And they would use it to launch pumpkins and black powder bombs. We uh, we would make sparkler bombs. Where you... Uh, hey kids, don't do this. Um, you would take a tennis ball and shave off the old like sparklers that were on like metal sticks. You, you just like take whatever a file or, or whatever and just shave off all the powder into the ball and you just fill up the ball and then tape it shut with like a homemade wick of like another sparkler or whatever and then you light it and get far away it my parents did not like it because it would blow holes in the uh, driveway yeah You'd, well we did put it in a bucket but it would blow up the bucket and the driveway underneath, and then we didn't do it again. Yeah, because the concussion goes <laughs> every which way. <laughs> yep. See, I had a dad who encouraged that kind of stuff and bought us uh, black powder from a sporting goods store. Oh, <laughs> uh, that would have been fun. So we would fill old medicine bottles with that and then tape them up and uh, light them off at the property line 
by the neighbor's house we didn't like very much, which maybe terrorism. <laughs> it was the pr it was still on your property, probably. It was, but then we used the half of a pool to create a sound cannon. So we just used it to reverberate the sound of a black powder bomb at them. Oh, it's so fucking loud. Yeah, we did some some redneck shit growing up. I think uh, I think we all did. That's fine. Did you did you do any redneck shit growing up, Dakota? Absolutely. Anything you wish to share on on live air? Um, meth. No. Um, that wasn't my thing. Blue meth. Uh, no, I watched Breaking Bad too late. Um, though that would explain my constant teeth problems if that were true. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of like one of the huger things I can think of right now is we would, um, take all the ends off bottle rockets, put them in the middle of the street, and like light them off in like the tr like three dozen amount. That was always fun. Yeah. And I know once it shot into my cousin's mom's, or I guess my aunt. I don't know. I never knew it was my aunt, so it's weird to call her that. Um, it, we shot some, and it, like, one flew directly into our aunt's hair, and it was smoking. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm assuming she and... noticed. Uh, no. Somebody else pointed it out. Uh, oh. Oh, jeez. Miriam, Aaron, were you your the, hair. What? Were you at the party whenever uh, we lit a friend on fire? I don't. Think, uh, I don't the think was so. it the? Were they? Was it the costume party? No, no, no. Okay. That was much later. Uh, this was our friend Andrew from high school. Um. Who got hit with a Roman candle and caught on fire. Oh, jeez. Um, amazing. No, I don't think I was there for that. But that sounds like it was fun until then. I mean, we still had fun. Oh, okay. Even <laughs> going on, got him a new shirt and... And called it good. Kept shooting fireworks at each other. <laughs> And <laughs> learned nothing. Yeah. Oh, speaking of shorts, one just popped up on my YouTube recommendations on my phone. So, guys, good job. Go check that out. They're I love... comfy and easy to wear. I agree. I'm not sure what. Carly was referring to shorts. Oh, uh, Jesus <laughs> Christ! Uh, it all comes full circle. You got about fifteen left. Is this Sentai oh, enough, Aaron? Does it feel Sentai? Yeah. I don't think we can get color okay. on this one. It's okay. Save all of your uh, your speed and prowess for the final one. All of my juices. Yeah. Speed, power, accuracy. All of these things. Ten paces. Uh, yeah! Quality. That's there too. <laughs> I... I don't get behind that. I don't want to promise things I can't deliver on. Well, Dakota, you got a, a lot to hold up then. Why do you think I made You're that sound? It's hard for the two of us. <laughs> oh, it's okay. We'll get a third artist. <laughs> Yo. Joe? Are you Joe? Joe? Joe, come save like us. We... I like how neither of us hesitated to yell for Joe. <laughs> <laughs> you just so... got a, a ripcord on our chest labeled Joe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to be really fun when we live together and I can actually do that. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, tag in. You just delete your art. 
Well, he knows best. <laughs> there you go, kid. I mean, he had the same schooling I did. I can't really argue with his methods. It'd be the ten paces way. There's an ant on my screen. What will you do? He's searching I'll to see if he had Valor now. installed. <laughs> There's no time. I've been letting the house centipedes in my house live. They can deal with things like this. You know, uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I had something, but then, then it, 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 it died. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I've let you down. Eh, a little bit. Uh, ant farm keyboard. <laughs> That's what it was. I'm glad you made it back. Yeah. It's... Is that a Mr. Show sketch? Uh, no, that's that's from Frisky Dingo. Uh, oh, that's oh, why it sounds familiar. Just of the whole, yeah, yeah. You can really trace events from it. <laughs> he throws them away next to the the things of radioactive waste. Radioactive waste. And then, uh, I forget who falls into it. It wasn't. Uh, the the oh, very yeah. happy-go-lucky. Oh, wait, I'm thinking of the lobster guy. No, it wasn't Wendell. It was um, it was Xander's girlfriend, the reporter. Because she then... Oh, shit. Because then she, she becomes gets, the ant queen. Yeah, she becomes the ant queen and gets radioactive ant-controlling powers. The antagonist. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's called God. That's your fucking rule. She's called Antagon. Really? <laughs> yeah, because it's Antigone. Uh, what is the antagonist from then? Oh, I don't. Maybe maybe she was workshopping a couple different names. I don't know. That just it sounds, sounds so familiar, familiar to me too. I'm I'm with you. I could be wrong. Maybe I made a wrong joke. How could you? It was just, it was a better joke, and, and they should have thought about it a little harder. <laughs> they should have went with the second idea. Nope, I always go with the first. No, first is the worst, second is, is the best. I always go with the third, and you'll have a show full of hairy chests. And the fourth? Don't even get me started on the fourth. <laughs> the fourth we we have to cut for time. Just like Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, uh... What was his name? Kishimoto? I don't remember the name of Naruto's dad. Minato. That is he. <laughs> I think Kishimoto was the, uh... The author. <laughs> Well done. What? Am I right or wrong? Or just you're just I'm just saying well done. Oh, thank you. I thought you said hold on. Hold on. What? Fact checking. Hold One on. fact hold checking. On. One second. Fact Let me checking. get in there, Jamie. Accessing. Fact checking. Well done. Inconclusive. I ask again later. I didn't know I was asking a magic eight ball. <laughs> Uh, seems likely. I think he's broke. Hold on. You're gonna have to shake again. That one didn't quite land on anything. Witch trying to spy on me. What, the ants? <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, there's a well, hag ants. somewhere. So be real with me. Would you, would you, uh, have an ant farm keyboard? Not after this. They would, you would give it somewhere to go. I don't want it in here. 
well, it wouldn't be in there anymore. It would be in the keyboard. Yeah, then I I try to type, and they're all colluding against me. Yeah, you would have to mash down on them. It would be a little weird. They're going to make me type nasty things. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. It was the ants. Yeah, the ants are making me type this propaganda. <laughs> what are we at time-wise? I got no if I can color. You're at eight minutes. Here we go. Roll those dice. I believe in you. I think you got this. You know, it was hard for me to come up with uh, different Femme Fatale things, because whenever I think of a Femme Fatale, I just think of a spy. Yeah. It's their truth. Yeah. Do you have do you have any uh, notable femme fatales that you think of? Um, I mean, a lot of might come from Venture Bros. Yeah. So I mean, it, it might be moot, but like, yeah. And I don't think of many characters as that, even if they probably fit into the category. Yeah, it's it's certainly a trope of its time. True. Well, with that, I think of um, Fuchiko Mine from Lupin the Third. That's a good one. Yeah. But again, she very much falls under the whole spy thing. She's not a spy, but she's a disguise thief. She's like early Nami from One Piece. Yeah. That is a good pull for that. I think, again, er earlier Nami would be more of one. She doesn't really use deception a whole lot anymore. No, like... Look at the loser. She had her arc. Yeah. Doesn't have to rely on subversion so much. Why aren't there men fatals? What is Nevin's there intro? Are. <laughs> oh yeah, prove it. Um, and don't say Jackie Chan. Oh, um, um. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, Jack. Uh huh. Yeah. Jackie. Hi. You, you said his name, so he he is here. Hello, Nevins. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about Jackie Chan. Oh yeah. Yeah, he just showed up. Yeah, that's Nevins. <laughs> Who would have known? We've had such a Hollywood clout all this time. I forgot that. I'm sorry, Jackie. He didn't want me to say it. Yeah, but Jackie, while well, you have you here, um... <laughs> say the line. <laughs> yeah. The one you're famous for. Yeah, do the thing. J a dance monkey. <laughs> Can you... Can you triangle jump up the alley outside my house? Because I think it'd look cool. Yeah, let me get my uh, my GoPro. You want a little more time on this one, Travis? <laughs> Thank um, you. depends on where we're at. Uh, four minutes. I just want to get color and shouldn't take me too long. Uh, give me a sec. Oh, yeah, you, can you got grab time. a few extra minutes.
We already brought up Venture Bros, but like, who are some of your favorite characters from that show? Because it's got such like a a massive pool to pull from. Probably recency bias, but Red Death is such a fun one. And uh, 42, of course. Yeah. Because I was watching some of the older episodes because they were streaming them on uh, Adult Swim's YouTube. Like there were just five episodes playing on loop leading up to the premiere of the movie on their on Adult Swim. And yeah, there are so many fantastic characters I forgot about. Obviously, Doctor Girlfriend's always been like a. Uh, a tremendous character. Um, I like the two-headed, like, oh, the triad old so hat. Fun. Yeah, they're like an yeah, old hat villain. So they're a lot of their poles are from like Hanna Barbera shit. The Hanna -Bar uh, Barbera plays on stuff in that show were definitely a favorite of mine. Because yeah, like they. It was all spoofs of those characters, and then they got picked up by Cartoon Network, and we're like, oh, we have access to these licenses? We're gonna make full use of that, rest assured. Oh, is that how they got such, like, overt references? Yeah, because it was just like a Johnny Quest parody, which yeah. is how, like, the, the pilot kind of started off. But then they got picked up by Cartoon Network, who's owned by Warner Bros, who owns all of that. That makes sense. I thought they were just really good at doing really close, but not quite. No, they straight up used Johnny Quest in later episodes. <laughs> Which is also one of my favorite parts of the two-headed, like, old hat villain. He's like, there was that time we were racing around in super-powered dune buggies. No, you fool, that was the wacky races. Wacky races was one of my favorite shows. Uh, not that I would, like, seek out, but if it was on, I would watch it before school. Yeah. It, it did its job effectively, which yeah. is just, like... I mean, we've kind of circled back to it is just content. Yeah. But everything that had to go into making a show like that. It's so weird looking back at these shows because like. So many shows were greenlit just because they were easy to make. Um, and that's why you see so much like reused animation within these shows or even like reused premises like uh how there are 30 billion scooby-doo likes what are other scooby-doo shows uh jabberjaw where it's a shark that talks like one of the Three Stooges instead of Scooby-Doo. Um, there's one called Fang Face where it's a cartoon werewolf instead of Scooby-Doo. Uh, there's there's one with like a a dog that has the power to turn invisible and I think is also a ghost? I don't know. And then, I'm sure there are more, like, I think Josie and the Pussycats kind of got onto the mystery-solving train for a while there. They did. Aside from Josie and the Pussycats, I've never heard of any other show that you were talking about. You ever heard of Jabberjaw? I think I've seen it. Like, not 
not it, but the actual shark. Yeah, I mostly know about it because uh, during that era where Cartoon Network was doing like these, they were having different bands come in and do songs about uh, different shows they were running. Right. And a band called Pain did this banger about Jabberjaw. That's weird. It was it was from the same series that released like that edit and ending music video where uh, they all got shrunk down by Sarah. Yeah. And oh, God, where yeah. they might be giants came in and did a song about Courage the Cowardly Dog. Yeah. I forgot about that. I revisit it often because that They Might Be Giants one is incredible. And then uh, Scott U Network did an amazing cover of the Jabberjaw one over COVID. So they had all these different musicians record remotely from their houses and then were able to stitch it together in one just fantastic recording that I think is just like a, a feat of editing. Was that a music video as well? Uh, the one I'm talking about now? Yeah. Yeah! Huh. So they recorded, I guess, their audio separately, but then they recorded, like, their visual parts separately as well. And so this is all during the pandemic, and to be able to time and stitch those together is just... Nothing short of a marvel. I'm good when you are. Uh, yeah, I think I'm good. Alrighty, I will reset the time. Well, uh, Travis, tell me about yours. So I've got a lounge singer, and I mean, that's like a pretty straightforward premise for uh, a femme fatale, but I figured she would have... Kind of like the, uh, the Bene Gesserit in Dune. The ability to alter her vocal patterns to somewhat, like, psychically influence people who hear her. Oh, cool. So, like, when she was performing? Yeah. Gotcha. And then she's got a, a P9, just in case. Naturally. And then, uh, Dakota, what you got? Uh, you help me out with a name here. I don't know Suntai shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna say Wonder Rega. Yeah. Sure, that works. Like, pretty much just pick, like, a, a kind of abstract descriptor and throw a noun on it. Yeah. Like, wonder, shiny. super... Shiny yeah. is a big one. Uh, it could be flying, glowing. Flashy. Uh, thun thunder. I mean, we're gonna go with flying ray gun because it's so on the nose, it's funny to me. Okay. You see, you just want to go, like, one step over from that. Mm. So, like... But that would be doing it right, and I don't want to do that. Okay. Well, there you go. That thing's somewhere. Yeah, they, they share a similar color. I could see them being part of the same organization. I don't know if that was intentional or if it just happened. It was intentional. Oh, okay. Let me get back to the here. Perfect. Dakota, I will give you say twelve more points. You're at twenty-four. And Travis, I'll give you uh 
If you're 10, you're at 23. You gotta catch up. Uh oh. Yeah. And if you guys are cool with it, we'll go back to uh, we'll go to the BRB screen, and we'll be back in a couple minutes after we use the little boys' room. Sure. Can't right. wait. Well, you're gonna have to for just a couple more seconds. We'll be right back. Well, Travis, I'm tired of talking. I'm not gonna talk for the rest of this episode. I want you to tell me what you and Dakota are going to do next. Well, I can talk. I, I've i been happy to this whole time. Uh, nope, that's my time. We've got to draw... Well, I'm going to draw our hero. My... You know, my kind of spy. My international man of mystery. My daring do in this whole adventure. And Dakota, you're going to draw his nemesis. You okay there? Yes, I had to burp. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're going to draw his nemesis. No, I'm not. Okay. I can't make you do anything you don't want to do. Good. But guess who's getting more panels? Hey, Aaron. Yeah, what's up? Can I have some more pants? Um, well, Travis did buy me dinner that one day, so... I think all, technically all of your panels are were supposed to go to him today anyway. So, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, you gotta earn them. Oh shit, you tricked me into talking. I'm not doing this for uh -huh. free. Let's get this over with. Yeah, that's the the unfortunate thing about having Aaron back on the stream is that his new contract yep. gets him paid by the word. Yeah, they get paid by the word in France. Can you believe it? I tricked you. You did. Amazing what good uh good worker unions can accomplish. Yeah. It was hard. You know, I was looking for, uh, I'll be honest, I was looking for work there. It's expensive in France, and uh, there's just, there's too many unions. It's hard to get into it. There's just too many of them. There's just too many. Too many to pick. Can't join them all, they told me. I uh, sure union union. And there you go. <laughs> I'm gonna start drawing. Okay, three, two, one, go. Ah, oh, doing the patented patented spiral technique. I always do circles. Is there any reason, or do you just like circles? Ah, oh, jeez. It, it just kind of warms up. It moves the whole shoulder. Have you ever done a perfect circle? Yeah, I'm sure once or twice. So you, when you when you draw, do you use your your whole arm? Yes, you should use your entire arm from your shoulder down. Uh, don't draw with just your wrist. That's how you're gonna fuck it up. For detail and stuff, it's fine. I'm not saying you can't use your wrist, but typically, especially in the early stages of a thing, you want to use as much of your arm as possible. It'll help with uh, the energy of the piece as well. I feel like I would mostly just use my elbow. As like a, uh, as elbow's like a fine. That's like a partial way to get it. But like, here, let me show you. Like, this is using my elbow. Right. This is shoulder. Oh, wow. It really frees you up to do a lot more. And then, even though you're not supposed to, what would just wrists be? Um, so, a lot more limited in, yeah. in range. And more uh, up and down, which makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it's, um, oh my god, trying to make it width-wise is really <laughs> weird with just wrist. <laughs> Jesus, fuck, what have you done to me? <laughs> um, no more questions, you're fucking fired. <laughs> Thought you weren't supposed to speak, you've unlocked something in me. 
Just like Travis unlocked something in me when he was talking about cartoons earlier. That's the unifying power of media. That's true. Speaking of uh, unifying media, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk came out. It, I know. It looks so good. I think it's selling well from what I've heard. I I want it so bad. It's a shame you have two long games that you're currently playing. Yeah, I gotta be an adult and I gotta be so much smarter about punning. Like just being in a rental agreement, I've finally hit that kind of milestone where I'm like, I need to be working towards owning a house at this point. I, d I don't know if it's on my horizon or not, because it's... I don't know. It's a fucking nightmare out there. But it... I... Renting and trying to live in a rented property is pretty untenable. Yeah. Especially here. Yep, I agree. I, I remember the... Uh just how terrible renting was you know a couple years ago and I know it's only gotten worse yeah like landlords hold way too much power we gotta unionize I don't think there's yeah. I don't think there's a renters union yet it, yet give it a couple years I could honestly see it with the way shit's going yeah. three months and give me their addresses. <laughs> and I by mean, their addresses, I mean the addresses of their land of the landlord, so that I can put their heads on the front of my car. I don't think it would be very hard for a landlord to be like, "Look, this is how much everything costs, and I do need to make a bit of money just because." Also, for like. Shit's but that's shit's not how that's, any market works. It's not. But In I, fact, that's exact. It's that mystique that holds up every market. It's the big curtain that beguiles capitalism. Yeah. It's how much money can we make? How much money can we squeeze out of this while also acting like we're not? Pretending like it's not a facade. Yeah. Like, and I also wouldn't mind if I could fix the things in my own home and not have it be a tremendous burden on me and maybe have it in some way affect my rent in a positive way. Right. Because I'm, I would be actively adding value to the house, but because land six alive, the landlord's not going to do that. They put in what is clearly an interior door to replace our back door, and then they didn't coat or paint it in any way. So you know those very, like those kind of panel wood doors that are hollow? Yeah. That's what our back door is. So, hey murderers, just saying. Uh, but with, like, as humid, and we're sitting at, like, 100% humidity, I can't use my back door because it's swollen. That's, wow. Yeah, my, my roommate's uh, door is swollen. Not, like, a back door or anything. It's an interior door, but for the same reason. Oh, ours is, like, cartoonishly swollen. Well, at least, you know, no one's going to break in. Or they might have to plug up the the dam of water with their fingers. <laughs> yep. Like Donald Duck. <laughs> what, a, what the fuck are you doing? It'll make sense. Yeah, I'm sure. Right now it looks like a mad TV cover. 
I can see that. Just keep in mind uh, Travis's word for me. And then look. Look at these things. Well, joke's on you. Uh, I forgot Travis's word for you. Good. Yeah, my word was Alfred E. Newman. That's a weird word. You want me to give you, uh, help you out here, Aaron? Uh, sure. Alright, so Travis gave me forklift. Oh, yes, yes, that's the word you meant. I thought he gave you a new word. I no, 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 he gave me forklift. Yeah, okay. And, and think Modoc. Yeah. Oh, that makes, that I'm makes good now. a bit more sense now. They, uh, there was a... A character in um, Megas XLR that was a play on him. It was, uh, I think his name was Galactimus. And he was this big floating head with, with tiny legs, and he hosted, like, a gladiator gladiatorial, like, sp like a space gladiator arena thing. That just seems like a like a big amalgamation of a bunch of marvel stuff in <laughs> yep. such like a such a fan of marvel way because the name sounds to come from uh galactus designed from modok and then the like archetype of the what was jeff goldblum's character in thor ragnarok uh, the Grandmaster. Yeah. I was excited for that character. Wasn't too excited about the delivery. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I mean, Jeff, Jeff Goldblum is pretty... He's Jeff Goldblum and everything. And I mean, that's why he keeps getting roles. I mean, he doesn't he have... Had... Range. It's, it's more the underutilization of such an interesting character, especially when uh, Jim Zub, uh, who's a writer and artist, actually, did such an interesting story with him as the main villain uh, very recently uh, at the time of that movie. Like, maybe three or four years before it. Oh, I'm sorry. His, yeah. His name wasn't Galactimus. It was uh, Magnanimus. Ah. Uh. But he ran the Galactic, so good. Galactic Combat Championship Federation. Uh, but, he, I mean... Go ahead. Oh, he was uh, voiced by Bruce Campbell. Oh, shit! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, given Hollywood constraints and what Taika Waititi was doing with the, uh, the Marvel franchise at the time, I think... That's about as good as we could have expected, <laughs> because. Oh, uh, the issue is more that the Grandmaster has absolutely nothing to do with any part of that story until that movie, and was a cool character wasted for that. That character oh, yeah, could have I been mean, anybody by name. They... They're trying to feature as much of the you know the canon as they can but they have to kind of sit together a lot of things yeah i just think that was a cool piece better left untouched for that moment because a lot of that also came from uh planet hulk planet hulk yeah I mean, it was just storylines that happens after Hulk gets launched into space, but it like it's his own thing. It was more Planet Hulk than any other couldn't popular comic series. Most of the rest of it was pretty original, which I enjoyed. I thought it was pretty good. So, did can the Hulk? Does the Hulk not need to breathe? I don't think so. Um, I mean, I guess it depends on the writer. 
true. Because um, that's what with these, you know, like well trod characters. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also well, one of the most recent uh, main Hulk series that was received extremely well. The title was The Immortal Hulk, so that can you can glean from that what you will. Right. Yeah, and when they shot him into space, it wasn't a spaceship. Oh, I thought you just meant like they catapulted him. No, 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 they, <laughs> they put him in a pod and just said fuck off. Because I was going to say, he could just, I mean, he's supposed to be a super genius, so keep track of where well, the... Holt's not. Is he, does he not retain his intelligence in... No, oh. um, not, well, some stories he does, but oh, normally okay. no. Oh, well, that ruins my plan of him remembering where the earth was and keeping track of where it would be you know going around the sun and once he runs into something just jumping off of that and running into the earth <laughs> I mean he well, gets then he can also him. fart gamma rays and <laughs> blast himself back to earth that's true he could just always fly like, if he wanted to flash mechanics He can be so angry that he, he pushes off of the fabric of space-time. I use my rage as a, a spite engine to to bring you back to those who have wronged me. Uh, actually, when he returns after Planet Colt, uh, he does come back to Earth with intelligence intact. Huh. Yeah, because that's where uh, Hulk Banner comes from, right? I think so. The one where they like take the best best of both worlds. Um, there's so many yeah. different iterations of Hulk at this point. It's you. It's hard. Oh yeah. To I mean that's Hulk. again every comic character. That's why like. Oh yeah. Trying to define anything as a a canon is yeah. dicey, and so it's just all these different writers trying to leave their mark and leave their mark and I think the idea is that they're just trying to play with these it's the oh what's it called uh that Italian play thing the art del I'm gonna look it up <laughs> um design so Aaron yeah, yeah what's up I want you to know that these are his appendages. These? I don't see what you're talking about. Oh, okay. Interesting. So those aren't just dicks. Those are your little 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 little. The left one looks like a dick. You got the little bell end right there. Okay. I think it was just artifacting. But uh, Commedia dell'arte is like an Italian theater thing where they, um, it's like known characters, like trope characters, and they, so if you know these characters are the thing, you know what to expect from them. Right. But it's just different stories written around them. Okay, yeah. That's how, um... Like, uh, Goemon. The actual story of Goemon. Is. Yeah, or like, Goku. Yeah. Because every, every manga we know is based off the story of Son Goku, the, the Monkey King. Ugh. Don't like that? I'm fucking, I've been over it for years. Like the concept, or the very on the nose version of it. Like, admittedly, some of the recent iterations we've seen have been a lot better. And Dragon Ball Z was an early like, adopter, so it's just like I don't know. Well, I just I... Toriyama was the first adopter. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't I sure mean, if he was the despite first. Despite the make that statement, despite you know the original bards who would spread the the idea of Son Goku. Oh yeah, we're talking about in like modern media. Yeah. Um, 
I, I'm over Sun Goku, the Monkey Prince, Wukong, all of it is just all iterations of it. I'm over all of them. Tell me you don't like Luffy. I really didn't like Gear 5, if that's what you're getting at. I just meant Luffy in general. He was always based oh. on Sun Goku. Yeah, but he wasn't, he was based on, but he wasn't a shameless copy. No, yeah. He he was a pretty well done portrayal. You're just over over the. If someone the could, lazy, could immediately be like, like, "Oh, it's that." Yeah, if it's like the character traits, that's fine. Character traits may, like are a fine basis for a character, but like I don't think anybody, when first looking at Luffy, immediately goes, "Oh, this is Son Goku." Like it's, it's not, not the not first like, thing you think, like Wu Kong or something. Yeah. It's not the first thing. Or, like, DC tried a new character called Monkey Prince I was immediately not into. Yeah, like, ooh, I wonder who this is based off of. You know, somebody should do that, and then it's just completely different. <laughs> it's it's Son Goku. His name's even that, but he's just completely not that character. Yeah. I actually went to a... Chinese restaurant, and I was wearing a Son Goku shirt, like a Hot Topic Son Goku shirt that just had uh, Sun Wukong in kanji, which is what Goku wears on his back. Oh, cool. Um, I never knew. And the like the old Chinese lady who brought out my order was like, oh, Sun Wukong. And I was like, uh... Yeah. What? <laughs> I was just caught completely off guard. Yeah, he's... Because you just... recognize the symbol, but I didn't understand, you know, like, yeah. the, the context behind the shirt or anything. But also, I didn't understand the context behind the shirt or anything. Or her and... randomly just saying it. Like, people will... No, like, it was... I was in the wrong there, if anything. <laughs> Well, that's fair, yeah. I just meant, like, people will comment on something you're wearing or a tattoo or something, and then you don't even realize it. Like, you're like, oh, what the fuck are you... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I understand now. Yeah, because, like, I went to an anime convention, and somebody asked if, how I felt about... I think it was Dragon Ball Z, and then looked down at my shirt, because I'm like, why would you ask me yeah, that? What the fuck? Why do you bring and up? they're like, they're like, no, you aren't wearing anything in your shirt. I was just asking, and I'm like, okay. Well, you're at an anime con, but yeah, that is a weird, just opener. Like, I'm not gonna be like, oh, but, so what do you think of uh, Record of Agarest War? I mean, <laughs> when I was in charge of the dorms at college they fight some of the students did that and uh they really didn't like my answer because i said something that i knew would incite them <laughs> i told them it was a thinly veiled uh, sex with girls i told them it was a thinly veiled homoerotic power fantasy <laughs> and um what one of them got really mad and the rest were like yeah kind of the rest got really gay the rest got really hard. It was it was interesting to me how many of them just accepted that. Yeah. Like, All right. There's like, yeah. Well, now that you mention we're... it. Because the last thing I needed those little fuckers era, to know was And that... I, I live for it. Like, I live for that. Are you all familiar shit. with... Uh, what is it? Letterbox? Nope. I don't think so. I know the term. It's... It's like a modern day film social media that seems like a big portion of the community is just finding gay subtext in old movies. <laughs> and I think it's fucking fantastic. Sorry, I had a cat to remove. Uh, I haven't heard of that. Like, is that a new thing going around? 
Um, I mean, I don't know how long Letterbox has been around, but it's like it's a social media built around film. And so, like, I think you in the way you would interact with other social medias, you add, like, movies you've seen. And I haven't used it personally. I've just seen I just snippets and highlights. Yeah, I want to know. But I want to know what the subtext in the Iron Giant is. Um, it's art. Uh, you stay, I go. You come, I go. <laughs> mm. Iron Giant will be the pony in your jar if you want. <laughs> Are you ready for Lazy? I am. Are you going to mirror it? I'm going to see if I can. I don't think it's going to work. I think with enough tooling, you'll be able to. God damn it. The ritual is complete. <laughs> I do have to add a middle tooth, but I think that's even funnier. Actually, I'm just going to rework the middle teeth. I, I kind of like the gap, though. That's so funny. Hold on, let me... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> I like yeah, it. Yeah, peak? <laughs> yeah, you yeah, can, yeah, yeah. You can peak. There's a little bit I of really love the gap. I, I think I want to keep... It's very Binding of Isaac, but I'm fine with that. Uh -huh, mind the gap. <laughs> Got it. Gap the mind. Yeah, I wanted to go weird with this one. I'm okay with it. All I can imagine is if my mouth was actually like that, I would my tongue would not be able to stop. That would bug me so much. <laughs> yeah, get you a man with a tongue that won't quit. Ooh. Get you a man with a gap. You know what I'm saying? I, want... I got an ass that won't quit farting. <laughs> oh, sorry, bud. Wow. I don't know why that one just killed me. Murderer. Murder. I've had that sword, like, just tucked away because I stopped using Twitter, and that seems like the only appropriate platform to... You've just had that one... ...shit out of a joke like that. It's just locked in the chamber. <laughs> And so, like, I can't post it on Facebook because, like, my family's on there. And also, who the hell's going to see it? It's not the scene for that. Yeah, well. Yeah. And I can't post it without a picture on Instagram. I mean, I guess I could post a picture of my ass, but... <laughs> Mind the gape. <laughs> Sorry to derail. You could totally post a picture of your asshole on Instagram. No, because then I can't put it behind a paywall. Oh, true. Well, be like, you, <laughs> you like what you see, there's don't, more where that comes from. Don't skin the cow for free or whatever they say. Yeah. You just have to... The the saying is you only want to skin one side of the cow. So that you have the other side still good. There are plenty of ways to sink a boat. <laughs> if you're gonna drill holes in the boat, drill them high. People in glass cows don't throw <laughs> loose ships. <laughs> hmm? What? Hmm? People in glass. I just don't understand about the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure. Just, I'm just gonna. Yep. Mm hmm. Cool. I thought it was pretty straightforward. 
I, you know, I just didn't think that's the problem here. It's one of those common American idioms. R right. Yeah, this is Biden's America. Get with it. I still don't forgive him for the gas. Get woke or get broke. Uh-oh, they've turned it. That's my new, that's my wrestling slogan. <laughs> you gonna be a real Irwin R. Shyster? Uh, I don't know if I can call myself that. His initials are IRS, and he was just a I tax man. I thought you were talking about the tax man, but my brain was like, That's I don't know if this is right. Great. Man, we need more silly people like that. So many. Yeah, just some like one-off characters to kind of come in. Someone should just make a character that's like, I'm a I'm a jobber, but I come out as a new character every fucking week, and like. That's exactly it. We need character actors in wrestling. Like, it. It's very mindset mindset, and I understand the. The, appeal. the drive to want to build a a brand, but I think the companies themselves need to facilitate kind of that that goofy mindset. The issue is when they do that, they just don't get it. Like it's just bad, usually. Yeah, and I mean, that's where, white, like, writer's workrooms yeah. come out. And I mean, if you're making a production, like, go with, go with production standards, because they exist for a reason. But also don't cross picket lines, because fuck that. Well, I don't think, um... The recent writer stuff would also have to do with wrestling writing, but I don't know. I mean, with this with this new model we propose, I think it would. Hmm. Wow, that is far-reaching. Yeah, so uh, let's trademark this. Yep. Do not steal. You can't. You can't. This is a verbal trademark. Yeah, like the box marked not yours in the, uh, in the office fridge. Room. Yep. You just can't touch it. Oh, you mean the one I'm going for immediately? Oh, you mean yeah. the one I got last night? I mean, um... um Travis, I did that don't left... do it. What? Oh, uh, I left a trap in my old, uh... The last traditional job I had, or no, that's not true. I worked at a different place after that. Uh, the last office job I had, I did leave a trap. Uh, did, did you really? In a food box marked uh, with my name. Old milk. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I marked it not yours, but um, I uh, left some chocolate in there, and among the chocolate was just an actual laxative. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had some waffles that I left out. And I also bought some uh, blueberry waffles, and I refroze the waffles that I left out after they had some mold. So, oh. <laughs> so that, yeah, you got it. Yeah, that gets better with age. Needless to say, they stopped eating my blueberry waffles. <laughs> Have you ever trapped anyone like that, Travis? Uh, see, I just started putting razor blades in all my candy bars. <laughs> and now I've just kind of gotten the taste for it. I call them Snickers because I laugh when I leave them out. <laughs> I I get a break of those Kit Kat bars. <laughs> uh... Hershey's now with razor blades. Fine one. I call them sixlets because that's what your tongue turns into. <laughs> oh.
can't I can't think of more candies. Um You get your tongue in my razor blades. You get your, your razor blades into my tongue. Yum. I love the taste of razor blade in the morning. Razor blades, razor blades. <laughs> Stainless steel flavor. <laughs> There's no rush. They don't rust. <laughs> take five. What's weird is that that was take five slogan all along. I I did. You know, I didn't get it until I tried it. <laughs> what was it like to chew five gum? When biting your hooked. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot they were the fishing hook ones. <laughs> it limited time only. What are fishing hooks going extinct? Why is it limited time? Um, because it got banned. Oh. Uh, yeah. That'll do it. Well, banned in America, I should say. Ah, uh, who cares about them? Yeah. We can import it. I know a guy. You guys, you, got, you want any? Uh, you want any of that special candy? Oh uh, yeah. All right, extra, extra spicy. Please. All right, I'll put you down for two. Give me the kick ketamines. <laughs> oh, feeling daring today. Yeah, Sounds I just like don't want to leave my couch. This is Travis. All he does is eat candy and sit on his couch. Don't be like Travis. <laughs> don't do kick ketamine. <laughs> You guys got about 26 minutes left. I thought you were going to say a seconds. No. Same. I was so worried. We haven't had that much fun. There's much more to be had. That's right. Approximately 30 more minutes. Oh. Yeah. And then you're just going to have to go to YouTube to get your fix. Why would I go there? You could get a, uh, you could you could watch one of our mini vods or uh, shorts. Well, singular short, I believe. Or did we have multiple? So far, so far. But keep an eye out. Catch one of those reloads. Mm hmm. Tasty. Get your daily dose. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. <laughs> Dakota, what does your what does your guy do? You want to give me a sneak peek? Uh, I mean, he is a he, he's a yeah. What am I thinking of? That, what's that show from Nickelodeon with the um, big giant face talking head? Big giant talking face. Head face face from face. No. Oh, it's well, like I Temple of the Sun. Yeah, doesn't that have a big talking head? Oh, the um, yeah, Olmec. Uh, Oh, yeah, it's like him. There you go. Um. Yeah, but the uh, idea is uh, uh, he's worshipped as the Jaws of creation. You know, I always the Jaws of the Jaws of what he. Li the Jaws of Creation. He lifts his followers to new heights with his uh, <laughs> retractable forklift teeth. Jaws of safe moving procedure. Yeah. Oh yeah, they adhere to procedure. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah, OSHA's, OSHA's not got a problem with them. Who do you think made it? Oh fuck. You know, it, 
It was always a childhood dream of mine to uh, conquer the aggro crag. What did you just say? Conquer the aggro did crag. You do it? I could do I, it. If, if we were to build an aggro crag for one of your birthdays, do you think? Do you think we? You think you're up to the challenge? I think we would have to monetize that shit. I don't know what the fuck you two are talking about. Would you be up for the, the temple guardians that would come out? Oh, absolutely. I would punch him right in the dick. <laughs> hey, Dakota. Um, you want some side work? No. Not right now. Hey, Joe. You're the one that brought... Joe? Me. You, uh, Joe? <laughs> I told you guys before the show I'm drowning at deadlines. Well, you got a couple months. Aaron sounds cry. like he's gonna give you a deadline. <laughs> yep. Now the just... line being that that aorta that runs through your wiener. <laughs> oh, good. I don't think that's the aorta, but I there's a not. big old vein that runs down there. <laughs> <laughs> it has a name, doesn't it? It's called the dick vein. I don't know. I call mine Stan. <laughs> Is that the, don't the, mind him. That's Stan. <laughs> that's what I said to all my high school dates. That you're just whipping your dick out? No. Uh oh. I was just getting bones all the time because I was a high schooler. Stan, cut it out. <laughs> oh, that's just Stan. Good old, good old, lovable, fuckable Stan. <laughs> unless, just kidding. Unless, no. Uh, Dakota, the Aggro Crag is the the Legend of the Hidden Temple map. Oh, they're always like, "Can you conquer the Aggro Crag?" Yeah, Dakota only ever played the DLC. Oh. Uh, apparently that was another nightmare of a show. Yeah. I watched uh, Defunct Land. Oh, did they have one about that? Yeah. I'll have to watch that. Like, it... It was very traumatic for a lot of kids. Oh, I can imagine... Those kids would not know what to do. And like they were probably subjected to long gross hours. Yeah, as are most shoot schedules. Yep. It's almost like children do not belong on a film set. Yeah. Let's get back to 30 year olds playing teenagers. That's my favorite. When they have to like it's good enough for my generation. They have to CG out the Adam's apple. <laughs> All right, two more. I oh, nope, three more things. I mean, Zach Efron pulled it off for long enough. Yeah. I see a spot in yours, uh, Dakota, but I'll wait to see if you hit it. There's plenty. I know. Oh, okay. It's... I'm not going for perfect, man. Yeah, Oops. fair. I... I could do more detail on mine, but I think I got enough. And I don't want to detour from the... That's fine. You don't okay. want to veer from like, like too the much. Art, the art scheme I've already created. So I think I'm going to call this one for me. Oh. All right. Yeah, you can't even see the thing I was talking about uh, from far away, so it doesn't matter. It was right here-ish, right? It's near the ear. Oh, no. Yeah, the ears are a little inconsistent. I'm well, it's about. it's part of like his hairline or something, where the black is. It doesn't matter. There's just a hole. Oh, that's... Yeah, I just didn't grab those. I didn't care. No, 
Oh, I... Looking at that, I adore that. <laughs> His name is, uh, what, did you name him? Not yet. Oshalme. Oshalme? It's a combination of Olmec and Osha. Oh. Well, then I like it. I thought it was just, uh, gibberish. Well, Travis, have you been playing uh, just Baldur's Gate recently? Or are you still playing Tears of the Kingdom? I'm um, switching between the two because I can't play Baldur's Gate while videos are rendering. That's fair. Uh, so that's like my pick up and play while I'm doing that. Um, also, it's handy to have on me. Um, also, I've been... Just trying to do more character drawing stuff. Um, I tried to go out and draw on my porch yesterday, but it was oppressively hot. Uh, yeah. Good the idea. son told me that I made a mistake. Yep. Did you uh, at least avoid a sunburn? I did. I just sat on my porch under oh, yeah. the shade, but like you could still I it. couldn't draw on my paper because my hand was too sweaty <laughs> and then like my sweat started dripping down on the page. Actually, you know what? No. He's done, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. Okay. Kind of looks like a, uh, a headlight. Huh? <laughs> you just grabbed its jawline. Oh, I was just saying the uh, the the charge beam kind of looks like a headlight. What the fuck? Oh, I know why. It's good that you do. I had um, a selection that yeah. was invisible. Yum, you could say. So, he's got his minions, right? Right. They, uh, literally their primary function is to lift. They lift him. <laughs> That's why they got him. How many minions have to lift him? Uh, probably at least four. Okay. Does he, like, he, he ha grow in size he or anything? No, that's pretty much it. I wasn't just sure. Transport. He... Yeah. Yeah. It's degrading to hop around. Or use you his ear limbs. Exceptional. Huh? He said, I'll take it back. No, I legitimately didn't hear what you said. Oh, I, you did exceptional. Like, I think. Oh, thank you. Just how well you utilize your time and. The kind of duplication of the henchmen was really well done. Such a goofy ass prompt. I love the time lapse is going to make no sense for this character because it's <laughs> yep. just going to be they're done and then where the fuck did these other things come from? <laughs> oh yeah, that's one thing left to do. Show the time lapse. Time lapse. At first, it kind of looked like Wario. 
because of the mustache. Oh, like, okay, yeah. I want to see what happens when I fucking just lazily copy, copy, paste, flip. <laughs> oh, it's happening. There it is. Yeah, it goes fast. Wow. Now your work is certainly paying off. Like, uh, just how clean that line work looks in such a short amount of time. Yeah. I mean, I have so much practice with that, though. No, I, I'm just saying, it like, it it shows. Thank you. Yeah, don't discredit the work that you've put in over the years to get there. That's an, I'm an artist. That's all I do. So, well, there you go. Yeah. I mean, we both know society loves artists, so if someone's, if someone has to put me down, it yeah. might as well be me. No one else out there ever Especially discredits artists. Oh, yeah, they love us. That reminds me of um, the guy that made Hunter x Hunter and Yu Yu Hakusho. Um, yeah. Yu Yu Hakusho was super popular just from the get-go, uh, and he always thought that he was not a good artist, and so he kept striving and striving to get better and better um, until he felt like he could really hang toe-to-toe -to -toe with the popular mangaka of the time. He really likes uh, yeah. action shots. Apparently, those are his favorite. Which I mean, make, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense when you're making a shonen. He also likes fashion, which also makes sense. Oh yes. yeah. yeah. Yu Hakusho yeah. was one of the few shows where people actually change clothes from time to time. Yeah. Well. I wonder if that's where, uh, or no, One Piece was already started by then, wasn't it? Yes. I wanted you have oh, to show yeah. Uh, mid nineties, early nineties, I think. Okay. So around the same time. Around the same time, I think Dragon Ball came first, and then One Piece, and then New Hawk Show. Hawk Show start after One Piece? I think it started during, but like in the beginning. I can check real fast. Gotcha. I thought right. One Piece started like 99. Oh no, One Piece. One Piece is 93. Wow! Oh, Yu Hawk Show's a little older, 90. Yu Hawk Show's older than I am, and One Piece is just barely younger. One Piece is as old as I am. Fuck, chill. In 97. My little straw hat baby. Still going strong. Alrighty, I think, uh... Travis, I'm gonna give you... Well, tell me about your piece. Sorry. Put the cart before the horse. Um... So, with the pharmacist and the lounge singer, I decided to make my... My hero, my infiltrator... Uh... The... Pinstripe perpetrator. <laughs> He's <laughs> a bartender, and they all work at a bar together, like speakeasy, so it's all like 1920s themed. And he mixes up cocktails to do goofy spy shit. Okay, what what is Pilsley's job at the bar? Uh, mostly barback. Is he like the drink creator? Uh, he builds the ice chest. <laughs> that I remember doing that in my various jobs. It's uh, it's harder than you think. You gotta have a really good eye. So yeah, he's always back doing stuff of his own accord, but he's never really respected. Yeah, that's fair. That's that's sad. Maybe he just owns the bar. Oh no, no. He, Who's... he got hired on his temp work. Oh. Do people ever see the owner of the bar? Or is it just like a nebulous, like, oh, you know, the owner? No, it's a shadow person on a camera on a, an old CRT. Oh, sweet. I love it. All right. Um, Dakota. Yes. 
your piece. Ta-da. Beautiful. One... No, um... This is, um... I mean, this isn't... Everyone knows who this is. This is just Osha. This is the true face of Osha. <laughs> uh, so they're going to be mad about me having a child working at a bar, aren't they? Um... Does when he... they, I mean, they're not operating equipment, so you're low on the totem pole, but um, a Showmac gets all his dues. Oh, and I think a Showmac's big on totem poles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you got the lifters, the lifted, which is the uh, number two, and then a Showmac. The true lifted. <laughs> Does he have underglow? When he's lifted up, yes. <laughs> Yay. That's so stupid. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give you uh, 100 points. I forget what you were at. So now you're at uh, 124. Well, yeah, what? I don't know what we were at either. I think you were at 24. Travis, yeah, that gonna, sounds right. I'm going to give you 99 points. I'm sorry, buddy. <gasps> Um, in um, addition to oh, wait sorry in addition to so you got 122 panels the uh, bad boys got 124 it's it's a weird ah, pretty, shucks pretty even spread but it seems like the bad boys are the more popular ones we'll get them next time yep. there's always next sometimes. issue sometimes man sometimes the bad boy comics sell yeah We'll have to name this uh, comic sometime. Be a shame if any of us uh, worked in comics. Yeah, gosh. I would never. Couldn't be me. Well, that's our show, everyone. Thank you all for tuning Thanks in. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. What they Hit said. that sub. Ring that bell. Watch that short. Give us those beautiful views just as you've always done slay for our content yes yeah, slay for content yeah only ours though nobody else's well no we've got bugs everywhere we toys see everything <laughs> so play nice No. Heavy trails. Heavy trails, everyone. Leave. Get out. Leave immediately. Mm -hmm.